Hello and welcome to episode 117 of Tourpreneur. We welcome back to the show Doreen Wharton of TravelLifeMedia.com. Welcome back, Doreen. Thanks for having me back. Shane. I'm really Glad excited. Yeah, I'm excited, as you can hear. A little bit nervous as well, because this is a brand new format for Tourpreneur. So this is going out on podcast form. But what we realized last time we spoke on episode 106, which is one of our most popular episodes, because we talked about copywriting tips for tour operators, that sometimes with this kind of show, it, it's great to hear it and get ideas, but it's easier to kind of look at the screen as well as we're talking about different aspects of copy. So we've decided to, uh, you know, put some clothes on today and do our hair and all of that, which, you know, I haven't done for six months, put my best shirt on, um, and actually do this on video format. So our listeners can, can listen, of course, and our viewers can follow as we go along. If you are enjoying this format, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button underneath here somewhere, and that means you'll get these automatically in your feed going forward. Um, so we want to talk about copywriting today. We've got three tourpreneurs who are very brave, Doreen. They have submitted their websites for review. This is a copywriting clinic. And uh, I, I really want to hear from you all when, when you've listened or watched this, if you enjoy these and if you want us to do more of them. Um, before we start, though, I just wanted to set this with copywriting is a fascinating art, and we touched on this in episode 106. And Doreen has her ideas on copywriting. I have mine. Um, the person who really knows what's going on is the data, right? It's the people who land on the website, and they Definitely. hopefully book a tour or sign up for your mailing list or wherever it may be. And in copywriting, you know, there's not one right opinion. There's lots of different opinions. So I want everyone to be open-minded today as they listen to the show, because it could be that Doreen and I end up disagreeing on a few things, and that's cool as well. It's, it's how we learn, Absolutely. and that's why split testing is out there and things like that. So, uh, so Doreen, thank you very much for uh, giving us your time today and coming on the show um, on to Tourpreneur. So should we tackle the first one? Yeah, before I do that, just a super quick thing. Um, what we decided to do is we reached out to the three businesses before this, this um, podcast, just to ask them about their target audience, because we wanted to give them the best feedback possible and knowing who they're trying to attract instead of guessing, will give them better feedback than just sort of thinking out of the air who they, who they might be targeting. Now, the hard part right now that, I think there's a lot of stress out there. It's like, well, my target audience was this, but now I'm going after these guys and they're kind of different. Um, and like one particular example is if you're going after Americans and they can't travel to your, to their country, that's obviously a real dilemma. However, focus on behaviors because just because Americans aren't traveling there doesn't mean that someone from Germany who might be able to travel doesn't have the same views and opinions of various tours and different and similar needs. So we'll keep that in mind as we, we talk about these. Yeah, that sounds good. And if we have time at the end, you know, I had a long think about this because I spend every day looking at, I look at hundreds of tour operator websites and I've come up with my five golden rules for copy. So hopefully awesome. we will get to that at the end. Uh, so, so listen to that. And uh, I'm interested to see how many of the Torpreneur websites we look at adhere to some of these golden rules I've come up with. Okay, wonderful. Let's do it. All right. So um, the, first one, the first one we have up is Unique Maui Tours. All right. So let so me you... just uh, show the screen here, see if we oh, yeah. get the technology to work here. Yes. Ta -da, it works. Okay, we got up. We are. Okay. Indeed. So we are on the homepage. Um, so here's what, so Delphine had mentioned to us that um, she has a target audience of consumers from US mainland, from various uh, states, California, Texas, New York, and others. They're, they tend to be high income. They have a high discretionary income. Um, high socio-professional category, so they're like doctors, lawyers, things like that. So we're going after that kind of consumer in the kind of 40 to 60 age range. They have kids, or they might be traveling with kids or adult kids, and they go to luxury resorts. So that's something to keep in mind when we look at it. Is she attracting the people that she wants, she really wants to attract to her business? So the first thing um, I would look at on a homepage is obviously the tagline. Like what is, what is who are they, what are they all about? What is it saying on the homepage? And um, we want to get their attention. 
So attention would be the first thing, like something that is, is going to say, hey, I want to continue to read on. So her tagline, explore Maui's wonders without the crowds. When I read this, I'm thinking she probably knows that um, there, that's an insight that people want to come on her tours that don't want to be on a bus. They want to actually don't want the crowds. They want to get to places easily. So I'm thinking that that's actually a pretty good tagline. What do you think? I love it. Um, and especially because of COVID, because nobody wants to go anywhere with crowds. But even if we were, weren't in COVID times, you know, when I go to Hawaii, the last place I want to be, and I'm sorry to our Waikiki operators, but, you know, on a busy Waikiki <laughs> beach, you know, I, I, you know, one of my favorite islands is Kauai for that reason, that it's less crowded. So seeing, oh, I can go to Maui without crowds, that, that I think is a great headline. Yeah, I, I, I like it too. I like the secondary line. So an, embark on a day trip of a lifetime with your own private guide. So she's telling a little bit more. So it is a private tour. Going to Maui potentially might be a you know, day trip of a lifetime because you, know, you don't always go to Maui. I mean, some people probably go um, more than once. Um, I, I would prefer to, to actually have that third line that kind of explains her explains the tour and gives it a little bit more um, excitement and, you know, wow, I'm going to do this. I prefer that to be a little bit lower down on the homepage only because I feel like there's just a lot of copy all in one place. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, much, yeah. it's a bit much. And but other than that, it's great. Yeah, well, you know, I think people go into Maui as well. They know they're going to get that, right? The rainforest and waterfalls, etc. So I would take that as standard. For me, what I would love to see there is a sentence or a quote from someone who's been on the trip, a review of some kind, just one sentence out of a review. Um, I think that would, because, you know, what we're trying to do here, the goal of this page, of course, is to get people to hit the view tours button, right? Ultimately, we want to, um, the whole goal of this is that people give up their hard-earned cash to book a tour with us, right? So each sentence or each element on this page is designed to get people reading the next one and then hopefully click, click, uh, click, click view tours. Or indeed, personally, I would probably hit why choose us because there are, you know, hundreds of operators on Maui. Like, why should I pick this one in particular? And that might just be me because we're all different and I'm a bit of a cynic when I'm shopping online. Um, so I like that that why choose us button is there rather than just about us. I think that's good use of yeah. copy. I like your idea of having, you know, back to putting some emotion, you know, try to get a little bit of an emotional, personal connection. If like having a, even a review, like yeah. a, a shorter review of like, wow, I really enjoyed this trip. We did this, something along those lines. Yes. Okay, great. Um, let's see how can, okay, so here. So then, so obviously this, this is the prime real estate. Mm -hmm. Then as, as we start clicking down, we get the COVID, um, the COVID update. Now, personal preference for me, and I think what has happened now because there's so many companies that have a COVID status, if there is a way to have this on the very top where you click on it to find the COVID information as opposed to having to scroll down, because I think people are now predisposed to actually see at the very top, a top banner to click on the COVID information. Let's not forget, this is totally top of their minds. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having to scroll down, but it's not, it's not terrible. It's, um, it just might be an opportunity that people are predisposed to looking at there. The, on, the only issue I have with that is because they say that their tours are suspended until further notice. So it could be like, I'm right out of that page. I wouldn't even scroll down. If I saw that note at the top, I might just be, oh, they're suspended. Uh, I'll go somewhere else. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the art of copywriting and we're all different, right? Um, yeah. Or is it the case that people looking at Hawaii now, they know that everything is, you know, suspended and there's the quarantine and they're really looking for, well, I want to want to be able to go there in January. I think right now when people are landing on this page, of course, it's for either to dream a little bit because who doesn't want to dream right now or it's future research for more tours. So, um, yeah. And I think as I read through it, it sounds like potentially October, they could be opening, right. not, not a hundred percent certain. So mm -hmm someone might be thinking a little ahead and saying, okay, this might be a viable option for me, you know, when I book my trip. What I do like is she has a very great, um, I don't think it, does it click here? No, it's her, um, she actually has a full page on everything that they're doing. And I, 
I know Delphine listened to our, our podcast about this because she totally took the, the, the feedback. Yeah, brilliant. We and love she's that. done, she's got, um, you know, who, what kind of business they're, what protocols they're actually using. She's put in safety guidelines for guests, payments and waivers. She's with pictures. She's wow. done a really good job with this. Love this. So I think, you know, when you come on this page, you're going to go, okay, yeah, they know, they, they really know what they're talking about. I, I would say this is a really good example for all our listeners. You can see that Delphine's gone out of her way here to put as much on this page without it being scary. You yeah, know? Um, absolutely. Now, in terms of copy, there's a couple of suggestions I would make on this page. Yeah. And we'll go back to the homepage in a second, of course, because it's a super important page. Um, there's an interesting thing about, you know, passive voice. Um, when, when you're writing and we, we often do it a lot. And, um, some would say, and I'm just going to show an exact example here. Um, where was it at the top? Yeah. So when you say your safety has always been our priority, that that's, that's a, we have a way sometimes in English to put in a few extra words that don't go direct to the point. And, and, and then, it, then you think, well, of course, safety was always the priority. Um, you know, you could be a little, like, much more direct and say, your safety is our number one priority. So, you know, your safety is number one. It's, it has always been. Um, it, it's just, there's, yeah. there's a point of view out there. And, and frankly, English is very direct. That, like, when you're direct and straight to the point, it just has more impact. It's a little more punchier. Um, that, that's one suggestion. The other one I might do, too, is... Um, you, so you say safety guidelines for guests and then employees' health and put safety guidelines for our employees. Like actually make it consistent. And employees' health is, okay, is that mean, what does that mean exactly? But what are the safety and guidelines that we're doing to make sure our employees are following to help yeah. you be safe? So little things like that could, like just, it just adds a little more clarity and um, a little more punch. And it's very, very difficult. If Delphine has written this herself, you know, when you're writing copy, um, it, you know, I would potentially send it to someone else to have a look at as well, because, you know, you find yourself immersed in it and you don't often see this. And going back to your point about the passive, you know, I get this all the time. I write a daily brief and I get told off by certain readers when I use the passive because it's, it's a very natural thing to do. And Grammarly tells you that too, doesn't it? Yes has always been our priority instead of your safety is our priority. It's far more powerful, but it's very easy to write in the passive. I don't know why that is, um, but I find it something I have had to really work on uh, in my own writing. It's a really yeah, good I, point. I get people to look at my copy as well for the same reason. I have, I have yeah. someone that actually proofreads for me because I, I yeah. miss those things too. I mean, uh, I, get, I get feedback all the time from my, my readers, which is great. I love constructive <laughs> feedback. It's very important to get that. Okay. Yeah, but this is a great page, really great page. Um, just, just let's go back to the homepage to just talk a bit about the tours, yeah. the tours themselves. So um, lovely pictures, exclusive custom tours with a private guide she's got here. Um, she really has some nice copy here. And, and, and I, I would just emphasize when you have these, these, these places where You've got a paragraph, really think about what is the most important things that my guest wants. Let's put it first and make it obvious. So, um, and I know we're telling a, a little bit of a story and we're trying to romance what, you know, the, um, what they're gonna see, but you know, avoid the crowds is a big one for her. Explore mm -hmm. at your own pace is a big one. Those could go first or they could be bolded. Um, those are things that you're going to want to really emphasize because it's really about the what's in it for me. It's meeting their needs. And um, then it's like, okay, wow. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to read, you know, hopefully I'm going to read on and kind of get a sense of what this tour is all about. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked the picture. Um, I think for me, it's labeled because, you know, the goal is always with copy is to get people continuing to read. So you need right. the picture, a good photo, because if that photo was a, a crap photo, they may move on. So it's a good photo. Um, and then the headline is important. For me, that first sentence has to be spot on. And I think this Absolutely. applies to any kind of copy. I think it should be short. It should be 
something that will encourage the person to then read on further. Um, if you can just scroll up a little bit, because I just oh, lost. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, the Road to Hana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Road to Hana private tour is great. Do you really need the ultimate Maui day trip there? Um, you know, I might be inclined to go straight into the copy and actually say, my, my first sentence might be, avoid the crowds, full stop, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what she wants mm -hmm. to get across. Um, and, and then just to keep people reading. So I like what, what we're going to get. And I think also what we're trying to sell is we're not trying to sell a tour. If you think about it, we're trying to sell a concept. And as you said at the start, Delphine knows that her, her customers are affluent and has a feeling for what they're going for. So it's creating a concept that I, I want when someone is reading my copy to keep going, yes, that's what I want. Yes, that that's, that's what I want. The minute they get to a no, then they're probably checking out and they're going to another site or they're looking for another tour. And sometimes that no is good because, you know, you do want to repel people that may not have, uh, be able to afford this tour. Or they may be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to see all this nature stuff. I just want to sit on a beach and get served cocktails, right? And right. that's what this is about. But I think that's what we need to think about when we're writing this copy is to really think of it as a concept. And I think she does a really good job of that here. She does a great job. Yeah. And like those, are, those are great points, Shane. Um, we'll go to the tour pages directly in a second because sure. I think there's some, there's some great things that she can really leverage with what she's already got. Now yeah. she has the... She has the video button here, which could actually, you could put a button right at the top of your homepage to watch, watch video instead of scrolling all the way down here, because then, then she's got her reviews, which right. of course are such a driving port part of trust. So, yes. you know, trust and persuading is, is going to be a, you know, a part of our scorecard of, of getting people to, um, to do our tours. So these should be higher in my view. I agree. I agree much higher but otherwise it's really nicely done um i won't mention the uh we'll, we'll go to the uh, the about page and, and mention a couple things but i'm just going to talk one second about call to action so call to action we just want to be blunt straight to the point um she's got call now to discuss options for your exclusive private tour just think about every word what's important there um exclusive private tour, which things, what's, what's going to like, what's the, you know, what do you need them to do right away? So if it's like call now, book your exclusive private tour to book it. If that feels a little too, you know, you're lower down on the, on the page. Now you're hoping that they you've warmed them up and they're, they've been persuaded to call you or to, you know, to book a trip. You can be more obvious. You can say reserve, you can say, you know, organize plan something, you know, I discuss options is a little bit, you know, you can do something like a little bit more impactful with less words. Yeah. And I think also discuss options is a little bit mundane for something which is a paradise trip. And I mm -hmm. would, I would love to see something a little bit more excitingly, you know, call now to build your perfect trip in our Maui, Maui paradise or something like that, just to keep people excited rather than to discuss options. Um, yeah to encourage people to, that's if you want to encourage people to call. Those in. are all good points. And, um, I, uh -oh. and again, I do make the point Conversion. that, oh, sorry. You back? I'm back. Yes. Okay. Modern technology. <laughs> um, Modern technology. But again, some of these suggestions, it's, you know, that's why I always advise people to split test because just because I think that doesn't mean you're right. By the time a consumer gets to the end of that page, they may be sold. They just want to get on the phone to iron out a couple of facts and that's it. Yeah, you've got a few things at your disposal. So you've got Google Analytics. What pages are people going to? What are they, you know, wh how long are they on those pages? And there's another uh, program called Hotjar. Mm -hmm. And I think it's free with 100, if you have 100 um, people looking at various parts of your website, you can see through heat map technology what they look at and what they spend their time on. Yep. That is also really helpful. Cool. So I, I just thought um, it'd be worthwhile just looking at her tour page because I think there's some really good things going on here um, and some opportunities too. So if we took the unique road to Hana, um, what I love about some of the templates with tours, it's we're just they're really easy to follow. So her this is a this is a great piece to follow. There's a nice little map on here that shows the uh, the tour itself. But in terms of building desire. 
this, the first paragraph after it's called unique for a reason, you, you want to have some copy that's really going to really go, going to, you know, build that desire, yeah. something that, Oh, I really want to do this. Now I know there's scanners out there and there's lots of tour highlights of very specific things on here, but choose the things that are the most interesting because I know this is, um, go into more details in the detail section. This is the page that you want to really entice them to book. Um, let me, let me give you an example. I'm just going to flip quickly to the tour details page because I think it's all here. It's just a matter of maybe putting it on the, um, the other yeah. page. So let's say for example, so the highlights of the unique road to Hana, she adds hiking through lush rainforests on windswept drylands, swim in or jump off pristine waterfalls or swimming halls, taste fresh banana bread, coconut ice cream, and all these other things. Brilliant. She could actually just take those few sentences and put them on the other page. So in that paragraph and then reduce, I can go back to this page and then reduce the number of, I want to leave, um, reduce maybe the number of stops um, and, and then things like head to the backside or go counterclockwise to avoid the bulk of the crowds. Well, that's sense. a lot of detail. Yeah. So yeah, focus on the stuff like, you know, wetting their appetite. And then those are the detail things that you could tell them, you know, in the details. I absolutely agree with you. And I wonder, because when you click through that went to, to Fair Harbor, whether that was Fair Harbor's advice with, with those smaller points that they, because Fair Harbor, if you think about it, are sat on so much data as a booking platform, they can see what converts and what doesn't, and they make their money out of a booking fee, right? So I wonder, Delphine, if that was advice you got from Fair Harbor, but you know, definitely use that and put it on this page. And I guess you could even have a link at the bottom here saying, you know, in more detail, and then it's good for Google, or it's just good for people who want even more detail, because then you've encouraged them to click that link, it's up to them, and they can read all this. Um, so that, you know, because some people are cynical, they want to see exactly what they're getting, but here yeah. you're still selling it. So I, I like that. Right. And that's the, that's the beauty of having the summary page and yeah. then the details page. Definitely. Um, what about yeah. photos? If you scroll up, mm -hmm. how is she doing yeah. on photos there? I see one and then. One here. And then I think there was a few more on the details page too. Yeah. There was another one on the details page. Uh, I would like to see a few more photos on this page. Uh, yeah. on, on the one yeah. back to because we just got one, which is great. It's a family and, and the map. themselves. Mm -hmm. But I I don't I would I would like I would like to see more photos here from the tour. From a from a copywriting standpoint, so on the right hand side you can see notes. Mm -hmm. Now you can truly make these notes. So really make you could really reduce the amount of, of copy here. So instead of saying, of course, we can't do it all in one day or, you know, but if this is your private tour, like your private tour, do it your way. You could do this in bullets, visit Garden of Eden, you know, um, entrance fee, um, separate entrance fee or by special request. You could do, you could really reduce the number of words here to truly make it just notes instead of yeah. commentary. I'm not mad on this. I'm not keen on the, the note section because, you know, I believe in the adage, don't make me think. So I've landed here. I like the, the look of the day tour, but now you've planted a doubt in my mind by saying this doesn't cover the national park, but this tour does. Then I go and click on this other tour. And then you put me in that paralysis of making a decision when I'd already pretty much decided on landing here. Yeah, this is great for us. But now you've put something else in my mind because maybe I don't know about the seven sacred pools. Then I go off on Google to research that. And then maybe I don't end up coming back to unique Maui tours. I find that I Google it and find another tour. So I'm not sure I would actually include that um, in this. Mm -hmm. You tell them what they, what's not included when they're at that, you know, this aspirational ready to book stage. Yeah. And I, you know, Delphine's going to know her audience better than anybody of what, what are the major questions people ask? What are the things that she wants to make sure that they highlight because she just gets yeah hundreds of questions. Um, but those make sense. Um, 
and then but i i this is such a beautiful part of the world i i really i do strongly suggest more photos on that that page because this is the mm -hmm. fair harbor brochure page right so i don't know who's in control of that copy if this is advisory from fair harbor maybe someone can share with us but this is your real estate here delphi and i definitely feel that more photos of the sites and what people are going to see uh, would be very helpful because you know the the cost it's i think i just saw it come up 745 dollars this is not a cheap uh excursion right so you want yeah it's as, a 10 hour trip too the higher the price the more copy or images are needed in my in my view more of a sell yeah because okay. if i'm going to drop 750 dollars on a tour you know i, I i'm going to need to see more more photos for sure uh, but I, I like this thing at the top though the duration capacity rates includes um i like that a lot because you're seeing at a glance okay what does this cover there's a lot of really good templates out there for tour operators that really yeah. help just yeah categorize this information can we talk about their about page for a moment sure yeah let's do that okay coconut ice cream got me there i know no kidding hey eh? um so as you can see if you look at the the drop down here mm -hmm. Delphine has a lot, she's a, she has a number of different pages. So why tour with us, meet our guides, reviews, our values. Then she's got her COVID um, on there, blog and FAQ. So there, there's a lot of things there. I would, um, I would look at what your best performing pages are on here. And I, like, I, I love this why tour with us, wonderful. Yeah. Of course, we wanna know they're professional, we care. Um, they have a lot of customers that have come their way, this is great. They also have, a lot of great um, information about the vehicle, which they probably get questions about. We explore the secluded areas that are inaccessible. So this is a really nice page. Um, I'd be interested in knowing how this page does relative to also her Meet Our Guides page. Mm -hmm. um, because you could potentially put them together or say for example, if the Meet Our Guides page was a top page, I'd be really interested in putting a paragraph at the beginning where she can really tell her story. Like she can relay back to the point of personal connection. She could talk about her passions. Um, she could talk about her business and why it's important to her to get up every morning to do her job. Um, what values, so they're doing a lot in terms of conservation. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, what's happening with the environment in Hawaii that really concerns them. So you could really highlight that story, even talk about you know what it's been like since COVID has been closed and and yeah. how you miss travelers so I, I would put a paragraph in there um you know crowds over tourism it could be you know was a huge problem before is it gonna you know her point of view on that could be just a really engaging paragraph about how she feels yeah i'm not such a big fan of that personally because i think keep the politics out of it i want to go to hawaii for a really good adventure and day out when i start reading about over tourism or, or whatever maybe and i'm saying this that maybe that would turn the person off because they're like no i, I just want to get away from the world on this trip i don't want to be lectured to uh, about sustainability that's just my view unless this is branded as, a, as, as an eco tour that's very different and also i think what i would like to see um on this page is a video two minute video from each guide because if you're going to spend 10 hours with a guide that could be the deciding factor mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i remember talking to chris wilson at uh, totally swiss and you know, there wasn't much about him on his website i'm like chris they're spending 10 hours with you like i'd want to know who i'm spending that 10 hours with right um, i think um the point i want to make is what can you do to establish that personal connection and i know yeah. like a bio is in there but a bio doesn't always do that because it, it feels a little bit like a resume. And this one's in particular, I know there's a quote, but these ones, like two of them are written as a third person and, the, yeah. and Laura's is written as first person. So I would change these to first person yeah. to I, I did this, I'm passionate about this, et cetera. Um, and I, I like the idea of like, what more can you do to like really share what your values are? Because the, these guys are putting money towards um, the environment they yeah. obviously care about a number of things. So there's some things that they could do to really highlight that. I think so. And also, I, I guess, again, you're looking at a high price point here, right? $745. Yeah. You're going to yeah. need to do a lot of convincing that you are a great tour. I would even be inclined to say back on that tour page that we looked at, that yeah. maybe a this video one? of 
uh, one of the, you know, from Delphine on that page, talking a little bit about the unique road to Hannah. And also, if possible, maybe if you can do this, is a video quick interview with people who've gone on the tour. What did they say about it at the end of it? Because I just feel 745, you've got to do a lot of work here if people aren't familiar with the company uh, to get them to pay for that. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Reviews will always, you know, don't be stingy with your reviews. Put them wherever you can. Yeah, there's no reviews on here, I don't think, when we looked. And I think uh, that's just... Let's see here. Nope. Not on this page. I would definitely have some reviews here. And if you can get video mm. reviews as well, because I just think video reviews, they just, they're just they genuine, they're authentic. And I think people trust them. Yeah, video is insanely right. powerful. That's for sure. Shall we, we move uh, on to uh, the next one? Yeah, sure. Um, these are great. I mean, the thing is, we could spend an hour each on these, right? We could. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe in future clinics, we will just have to pick one. Um, let's just see how we get on. Taste of Toulouse. <laughs> Okay, so this is Jessica's um, Taste of Toulouse. Um, so an important thing just to, to mention, so when we asked her about her target audience, um, she, a, lot of her, a lot of her audience is Americans and they can't come to yeah. France, you yeah. know, with the quarantines and various other things. However, she said something to me that viscerally got me emotional because it, it affected me. So she said, she said that, you know, even though I have an Americans, but they're not coming here, she said, there's a number of people, like my audience are people who find French food and wine somewhat intimidating and sometimes mm. unapproachable. And I just said, that is totally me. I'm not American, but I, <laughs> I definitely find French food intimidating. And then I find sometimes if you don't know the language, you don't know exactly what to say, you're not gonna know what to order when you go to a restaurant in France. So I think that is a really valuable insight that she can bring into her coffee. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I so also... She, mm -hmm. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead, Shane. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, if, let's look at her, if we look at her, her title. So food tours that help you experience and taste to loose like a local. So she's, to, you know, these are, and she's also said that these are people that really want to go to the local places. Mm. They don't want to go, you know, stop on a bus and go to the the larger, you know, big restaurant, they want to go to the little places. So she, she says that, um, I, I think she can do something with the insight that she actually brought out that she mentioned, which is the, the idea of, you know, making French food and wine approachable and uncomplicated for travelers yeah. or for food lovers. So that, that could be maybe not necessarily in her line, but perhaps it could go down a little further below because she's got some wonderful credentials here. I mean, she's got yeah. some great PR, but I was thinking about this line that it's a little further down. So um, Taste of Toulouse offers English speaking tours and other delicious experiences. And then she goes in to talk a little bit about, you know, connecting with local artisans and things. She could actually have a line there that says something like, you know, English tours for, um, making French food and wine uncomplicated. Like you could literally say it as clear as that, that that's, what, that's something that they deliver every time. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that to an extent, but then I do think if I've landed on this page, it's because I'm intrigued by going on a food tour and I'm gonna assume that the, the tour guide is gonna uh, help me learn about French food. So they've decided that, yeah, I think the key thing is not to make it come off too, um, specialized i guess and maybe something like food tours that help you experience and taste foods like a local and underneath I'll, I'll unlock the secrets to french food and wine uh on, on our tour Some, something like that would would be sufficient because i just think if someone's landed here they're looking for a food tour right they're not just i'm uncomfortable with french yeah. food my, that's my feeling anyway if i was to click onto this site it's because i've, I've already decided that or oh, food tour might be the best way to go about this rather than going to a restaurant and having a tasting menu and not really knowing my way around the menu etc um it the only thing i would say shane with that yeah. is it depends how they land. you know it depends where their head is at so if they land yeah. on it maybe they had a facebook ad maybe they and they clicked on clicked on the page or they could be clicking yeah. on another page right they don't always get to the homepage. True. Um, the question would be, what would help them make a decision between one food tour over another? And if it's a, if it was like, you know, I'm really nervous about, you know, 
I find it really intimidating French food. And these guys say, Hey, you know what? We take the intimidation out and we actually going to make this fun and interesting. Maybe yeah. that's a decision factor. That's what we don't know. We don't know enough about our, the audience and, and how they're really choosing between one food tour or another. I, I agree. And we, we could spend hours discussing that, but we don't, <laughs> yes, we, we don't can. really know who's landing on yeah. that page. I think for me though, if, if Jessica is saying that no, obviously no Americans are flying in, you know, who is booking food tours right now in France? Mm -hmm. Is it locals? Uh, I know we had um, a chap on from a food tour, uh, a history tour company in Nice, and he was serving people within a certain radius. Um, so maybe that, you know, this needs to change. This text here for now needs to change food tours that help you experience. You know, it could be something... Uh, aimed at you know the expats who are living in the area who might be traveling around I don't, I don't know or I don't know what Jessica's level of French is like I'm going to assume she wants to stick with English language tours but I, I think she had mentioned that she was going to start doing French like in in French in French in the, the language um, which would obviously okay. uh, having a having a separate page for the French language would be would be helpful because well, then you can really customize it and I'm thinking the um, copy, the copy would need to be different if it was, you know, because there are there are people who are living in Toulouse or the area who 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 may want to go on a food tour. Um, but you know, for the purpose of this exercise, let's assume she doesn't speak French and she's only doing this for mm -hmm. for English speakers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we, we might be giving advice that's not not relevant in this case. But I do like, you know, when I go on a food tour, I want to experience the city. I mean, it's it's that it was that article in Condé Nast last week. I do want to experience mm -hmm. it like a local. But for me, like a local is, I do want to go to the, the places that are off the beaten track. And it's not like I just pull up, you know, a, a guide on Toulouse and say, well, these are the best rated restaurants. I'll go to them. I want someone who's going to go, oh, no, no, if you, it, this is the best bread in town. This is the best cheese in town or wherever it may be. So, yeah. Um, and she's got some nice lines with that, which I, I've maybe even put into a, like a bullet to, to come out yeah. a little bit stronger, like connect with passionate local artisans and, and businesses. I, I don't think you need and businesses, but connect with passion, passionate local artisans who make and sell some of the best products. You could just say who make and so, well sell because then you could buy it, make and sell some of the best product products in Southern France. Like that's a great line. Fantastic line. And I think it can be um, made even more appealing. And, and again, this is something that the tour needs to sit down and work out. Is there a way of making that even more attractive where people are going, yeah, oh, I definitely want to do this. So yeah. make and sell some of the best products in Southwest France. Well, you know, I get it. I'm sure everyone says that, but I like these words, you know, unlocking the real Toulouse, you know, I'll show you, I'll take you off the beaten track and you will taste some of the best products in Southwest mm -hmm. France. Cause you then think that, Oh, I'm getting something. This tour guide really knows her way around Toulouse. I'm getting something here. That's a little bit different. And I always think with tours that if you can take people behind the scenes or they think they're getting something that the regular tourist is not getting access to, that's a winning formula. Yeah, absolutely. hundred um, percent. Which then, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. So she's got her health and self safety page. She's also got a link on the top that yeah. I was talking about where people are getting used to kind of learning about that there. She's got her most popular tours and experiences. I think this is just really clean. It is clean. Yeah. It says what it is, and then you can click to learn more. And um, her online cheese workshops, and then why why take a taste of Toulouse food tour? This this is really great. This is really clean, straight to the point. Beautiful. And um, obviously, then she has her reviews too, which is wonderful. Yeah. And. Um, Super quick thing, which is just a, a small little copy opportunity. When you have a newsletter, we, um, instead of telling people to subscribe and on your button say subscribe to me or sign up, tell them what they're getting. Because if we're all in the what's in it for me, are they gonna get, so here they're gonna get a monthly update with events, news and more. So you could say get, get the event schedule or get you know tips about French food or something. So instead of saying subscribe, because we're less inclined to push that button when it's like, oh God, another news email, another newsletter coming my way, instead is like, what's in it for me? Yeah, I agree with that. And I also feel that, okay, great events, news, et cetera, but what else can the tourpreneur put in here that makes it even more attractive, such as, you know, receive a recipe from one of our favorite 
um, vendors in yeah. tools or every month we interview one of the one of our stops and it could just be a five question interview that goes out right just something that's a little bit more than an update news that that depends how seriously the tourpreneur is taking it and you know these things take time as well so we have to Right. And that's a, that's a lead magnet, which can be very effective to, to increase your, increase your newsletter subscribers. Absolutely. Um, okay. I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to show a few couple other things on this, which I thought were extremely well done. Um, Something else I like, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, just before we leave this page, yeah, just sure. scroll down to the tours. Okay. I really like this. Uh, if you keep going, uh, yeah, I love, I love that the prices are on here, right? 79 mm -hmm. euros booked now. So if that's out of my price range, I'm gone. I'm out of there and I'm not wasting my time looking around a website. And maybe this is more of a consumer thing, but also it, it does mean that you're managing that expectation rather than have someone click the Victor Hugo tour and they go, 79 euros, oh, that's way too expensive. You know, here it's like they know right away before they go and read it. I like, because I hate hunting for prices personally. And so I like that. And I like- Oh, the yeah. The duration yeah. is also so important with tours because, you know, we're all planning, especially if we're only somewhere for a weekend. And I like that she includes the duration on there because that would influence which tour I'm going to book as well. I, I just, just for the sake of time, I clicked on the, um, one of the tours just to, to take oh, a look at the copy. Look at that. Look at that. So <laughs> these photos are incredible and oh. the copy is spectacular because yeah. look at this. So take a sweet stroll through the delicious and delightful world of French chocolate and pastry. Does that not want you to just, you know, <laughs> book, book now? Oh, and, and, that. oh yeah. Wow. And, and in three sentences, well, not even two sentences, she actually explains what you're doing. Spend an afternoon indulging in the top sweet creations, exploring chocolate and pastry shops in a charming city center, taste the best that talented local artisans have to offer. And then the details for the scanners. So I think yeah. these are really well done. Yeah, Very I well agree. done pages. I agree. And I also love that book with confidence. It's so important right now that people know they can, you know, we don't want cancellations, but they have that option. I think that's peace of mind. But yeah, just, just looking at, you know, as we said on, um, on Delphine's, I didn't think she had enough photographs here. It's the opposite. You know, there are so many photos here and I think the photos encourage you then to read the copy and find out more. Um, yes. Brilliant use of photographs, Jessica. J'ai femme, j'ai femme, j'ai beaucoup femme. I'm starving now. <laughs> uh, I wanted to show uh, just quickly the, the, um, the tour pages are all really great. The, the COVID page is fantastic. Um, yeah. So she's really taken the time to talk about what's going on, how they're committed to supporting their communities and their local businesses, yeah. what's happening, the status with pictures, what they're doing. So, you know, pictures say a thousand, Look you at know, that. a thousand words. And, um, yeah. and then what her policies are right there. So this is where bold and small paragraphs really matter. Like it really, really works here. So the hundred percent refund, small groups, symptom free, mandatory mask wearing, like all those things that someone's going to be searching for and can easily find. Beautiful website. I yes. think this is the gold standard in food tours for all our food tourpreneurs who are listening to this right now. Go to tasteoftoulouse.com. I think this is excellent. I really now, do. Now, and Jessica mentioned she was making changes to her about page. So she didn't want us to comment on it yet because she had <laughs> come up with this beautiful page that she just didn't have a chance to, to put on yet. So I'll, we'll invite everybody to take yeah. a look at it when she gets it up. Yeah. But even this, I mean, the whole, the whole site I think is fantastic. Great it's, use it's of photographs, clean fantastic. copy. Um, yeah. Well done. And okay, also should we seeing, move on? Okay. On, sorry, on the homepage, okay. seeing the, yes. the kinds Let's of people who page. are, um, you know, her press and publicity is also give, gives you that, that credibility. Uh, oh, big time. BBC Good Food, Waitrose, uh, Daily Beast. I mean, these are all, all these are all media outlets that I know. So immediately I'm like, wow, recommended by these. Even if I don't click into it, it's still, and look at that, rank number one trip advisor for food and drink experience in two years. So I think Jessica goes a lot, um, works really hard here to prove her credibility uh, on this yeah. whole page. So that I'm not even doubting that this is a good tour. You know, I'm not, usually when I see a tour or anything online, I look at it and think, okay, this looks good. Um, 
let me go off on Google reviews and things like that. I think here I just wouldn't do that. And, and I don't say that lightly. That's not something that, I, you know, I, I do. I just did it now for compression socks for running. I'm all over Google, for <laughs> Facebook ad. And I'm like, I don't want to be ripped off. And that's the key thing. But here I feel there is so much, um, there's so much on this to, to make me feel that this is a great tour. I, and, and just because you don't have a lot of PR doesn't mean you can't have a good website because you can use your reviews, yeah. you can use copy. There's a lot that you can do to convince and to persuade. So I, I you know, for the people that did, don't have this, this level of um, credibility when it comes to PR, uh, it, there's other things you can do too. Yeah, and I think probably that's another episode. Maybe you know we can invite Jessica on and, and talk about how to get this kind of PR because I know we'd all like it, but we don't know. Or again, we don't know how to go about it, and there are a lot of uh, empty suits out there that will charge you a load of money and not deliver. So I think we should produce a future episode on that. So if anyone out there is a PR expert or has had good uh, results, let us know. We'd love to feature you on the show. Back to wonderful. You. So should we go to the next one, which is yeah. uh, Black Cab Heritage Tours? Yeah. So uh, when Rob mentioned his target audience, um, he's also in a situation where he had a lot of Americans coming mm. to, to London and then now they have a quarantine. So obviously things have changed immensely. Um, so he's got small groups, singles, couples, families. He's got you know, a bunch of, you know, different kind of people. And this is where behavior again really matters. So what are you going to say to people that really care about your kind of trips. And so I think when we look at the homepage, I think there's a good opportunity here with the tagline. Because delivering a premium London tour experience doesn't really say enough about who they are, what they do, what they're all about. Um, you get a London tour, but what else is there that's going to attract me to read on, to continue reading here? Agreed. Agreed. And, and, you know, okay, maybe I've seen an ad to get here. So I get that it's black cab, but Rob, you're doing something so different, you know, your means and method of transportation and, you know, all Americans love black cabs, right? I mean, it's, it's a big draw to London, <laughs> red buses, red phone booths, if they still have those and, and black cabs. So I think you need that black cab here because people know what London looks like. And even though this is a great shot of the capital city, I think a smiling, tour guide taxi driver in his black cab at the front of this with yeah with with better with a better headline because i'm going to assume i'm going to get a premium london tour experience tell us why why is well, it and, and premium is is an interesting word right okay premium can mean good it can also mean more expensive it can mean a number of things it's like let's be really straight to the point obvious clear about what they're going to get um now if you look at his about us, the drop down menu goes, you know, he's got a lot about his driver guides and the London taxis and the knowledge that they have. Yeah. So uh, like I, as I was, I was just kind of brainstorming some ideas for him and I thought, okay, you've got a London cabbie who we know has an insane amount of knowledge. He knows every single street of London and it's like no other cab driver in the world is like that. True. Uh, in fact, unfortunately cab drivers in other parts of the world don't know a lot. <laughs> they don't know where to go necessarily. Yeah. And sometimes they charge you a little more. So these are the, these are like the creme de the creme of, of the kind of guys you want to hang, you know, go on a tour with. And they're also tour guides. So I, I was just sort of thinking like, okay, you've got, you mix a tour guide with a London cabbie and you've got like the most lethal quantity of knowledge and history that you would ever have on a day tour. And if you're a history buff, oh my gosh, like, if you're a history nut or you want to go to the downtown Abbey, which he goes to downtown Abbey, like um, the, the uh, film and the show sites, and he goes to the, the James Bond one, and there's obviously a Harry Potter one. Wow, like talk about going with like the perfect guide. Definitely. And you'll, you'll never get lost. So, so there's a lot he can do with really tapping in to those, you know, like it's, you're always going to take the best route. You're going to get the, you know, a really informative way to see London. You know, it's also going to be flexible and, and probably time saving. So maybe, you know, people that come to London, you know, really, um, you know, they're coming on a business trip and they, they only have an afternoon to go see something or they just, you know, they run out of time. They want to go do something or go to one of the sites. So there's knowing more about the guests and really, you know, are they history buffs? Are they like, are they, 
you know, they're just people that just want to get like, they want to ask a billion questions because they, they're just so crazy about Harry Potter. All those things are going to matter with the copy. Couldn't agree more. There's, there's a lot of work needed on this page because Rob is offering something unique and I don't think this is coming across on the page. And so as, as well on this page, so he goes into his TripAdvisor ratings. There's, there's only two on there. Mm. I know he has a lot more. And recognition and rewards and about us. I think the hierarchy could actually just be a little bit more, it could really get, um, it could really help with like what we do. So he does day tours, he does excursions, he does corporate events, he does airport transfers, and that doesn't come across on the homepage. And I don't think when you go to portfolio as a word, I don't think yeah. that really helps. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a corporate word that if I'm a family that's come to London for the afternoon, I'm not going to, I'm not going to click on portfolio, but I will want to know what tours they're doing. I would use so the maybe, word experiences there. Yeah. Or tours yeah. Or, or tours and transfers or tours and transport um, something. And then, you know, why choose us could be a section on there because again, the whole thing about, you know, we're going to take the best routes. You're never going to get lost. I mean, those are all insights about the, the London cab driver. And, and something that could be relevant for the audience. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of opportunities on this page. Massive. And I wonder as well, Rob, if, like, what's your most popular tour? If you look back over the last couple of years, yeah. what's the one that's booked the most? And maybe focus on that on the homepage, because you offer a lot of diverse products uh, and experiences, but you know what your best seller is. Maybe focus on that and then use that as a way of hooking people in. Yeah. Um, that that could work too and and i think um something to say that you are you're doing it in an iconic black you know london black cab yeah with a picture with people having fun th Definitely. that would optimize in a big way yeah i guess just distinctive as top of my head you know a picture of your your, your driver in the cab smiling and then you know a, a couple of sentences around that you know such as why people would want because not everybody knows that London cab drivers have to go through this, this knowledge training uh, and why they're the best tour guide. Just something to make this more unique and exclusive. Uh, yeah, and he, he has that. I mean, right. he, he definitely okay. has some pages, but they're extremely yeah. detailed. They're very detailed that um, in a few short lines, you could get to the point that would really help someone. And then maybe yeah. you have this as detail. Because yeah, yeah. maybe there's those history buffs that really want to know about everything about the, the black tax, you know, the black cap. But you could do it in a way that this is, you know, for the scanners and taking the most important points out and using them in your copy to help sell your tours. Yeah, because as, as much as it's good to have this history, I don't think this is selling the, the, the selling the, the tours. For me, as I said earlier on, you're selling a concept, not a tour. And this would be something I might go check out after I booked or after I've even been on it but is this going to make me book it? Because I can stand on a street corner and look at these cabs come by, you know, what, what we're selling you. So no, you get into a cab and our, you know, I would include something like, Rob, I'm not sure how many hours it is for the knowledge. I forget now. I know it's a ridiculous amount, but you know, that, that is differentiating your, your guides from the average tour guide, how much training they have to go through. Things like that, I think, are what will sell the tour rather than what happened in 1832. As interesting as it is. Um, right. Um, I'll just mention something related to that on the tour page. So <clears throat> I think this is where theme really helps on how things are organized. And this kind of comes up as more like a blog page as, a, as mm -hmm. opposed to a tour page. Mm -hmm. And like we saw in, in, um, in the taste of Toulouse where she had, where Jessica had one or two sentences that explain the tour and then the price where it kind of, it, it looks a little crowded and, and really hard to follow. Yeah. And I think that would be much better served if there was the structure was more in that format as opposed to more of a blog list format. It looks to me, and forgive me if I'm wrong, this is a WordPress theme of sorts. And I wonder if Rob is better using one of the WordPress themes which are purpose-built for tour operators because they will mm -hmm. highlight the tours better. This just looks like when I put blogs up on, like you just said, when I put them on, on Torpreneur and I add the category, they come up on a page which is great for a version one to get it out there. Uh, but I think you should be looking at a plugin or a, a WordPress uh, theme that is designed for tour operators. 
Yeah, and, and in a few sentences, explain what it is. And I, and, um, yeah, I think that would make a huge difference yeah, with, huge. Which, with all these tours. These are fantastic tours. And also, you know, I'm a huge spy buff. I run a spy podcast. Would I have scrolled all the way down to Bond with 007 in London? Maybe not, because of the way this is laid out, whereas if they were in blocks with the photo, with the headline, then I'm going to click through. Um, I, I would prefer that layout, to be honest. Right. And I would say the same for his driver guides. I think that the same thing happens if I can, if it's going to click here. Yeah. So it comes up as a category page, which, which is a symbol to me. You don't want to have that saying yeah. that it's, it's, it's more like a blog. And then it's a scroll of each of the drivers and then BCHT is kind of repeated every time. So as a, as more of a, um, because carousel of pictures. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like this could be arranged much differently. That yeah. could be far more interesting. I think someone's probably told Rob, stuff your page with keywords for PCHT for SEO. And of course, this is copywriting, not SEO. But I think that's, um, yeah. I mean, I would, if you're going to go that route, put taxi driver guide, you know, rather than BCHT. Yeah. And, and again, I, as similar to, to, uh, to Delphine's, I would say, Rob, can you get videos, just two minutes with some of these tour guides? Because if anyone's been in a London cab, they know every single guide has got their own personality. And just capturing that on video, I think, would be very powerful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, at the very least, it could be arranged differently. And I think yeah. the, the information he has there could actually just be organized a little differently. And just, I think that would help, help immensely. Um, now, when it comes to copy and SEO, you do want them to work together. So mm -hmm. understandably, if you are, if, if, if Rob is trying to rank for Black Cab Tours, you know, ideally, you want to actually have a headline that reflects that and also in your copy, but then you don't want to overdo it. And, and, and sometimes with acronyms like BCHT, it, it comes across, it's a little confusing and it's not yeah. necessary because he could have that as a title. Yeah. For example. Yeah. I agree. So. Um. Yeah. So over, I, there's, there's some great information that can be pulled and organize differently that could make this website work even better. What does, if you scroll down to the knowledge, what does he have there? So this is a page that actually talks about the knowledge of the taxi drivers. And so um, also really detailed, but I think we, we could easily take information from here and use them as selling points for why he's different than, than his competitors. Yeah, I think you could have fun with this, Rob. I think you could even, <clears throat> sorry to all the other tour producers listening, you could even <laughs> poke fun at two other tour guides because of the, you know, the hundreds of hours that London taxi drivers have to go through to get their, you know, certificate um, or their badge or whatever, the medallion, I think they call it, to become a London cab driver. I think you could have a lot of fun with, with that. But it, it's a USP. This is a really big, unique selling proposition for Black Cab Heritage Tours. Rob, you, you're very lucky in a way that you have something that can really differentiate. Because every tour, every walking tour, is like, oh, we're the best. We've got the best guides. We've got the best this. You have a Black Cab, which is iconic. You have drivers that have driven all over London. I mean, they need to know every route. There is a great, maybe I'll add this to the show notes. It's, uh, it's off piece a little bit, but there's a great movie from 1979 called The Knowledge. And it's about a guy who goes through the knowledge training. And it's, it's a remarkable piece of 1970s, you know, comedy and humor. And, uh, but it just goes to show, they have to go on a scooter, on a moped and drive all over London. Uh, and they get asked questions, you know, oh, you picked me up at Buckingham Palace and you've got to take me to Upton Park Football Club. What route would you take? And there's no phone. There's no Google Maps. There's none of <laughs> They have to be able to do it in their heads. And I mean, it's incredible uh, what they have to go through. So, Rob, you know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's plenty for you to differentiate yourself here as well. 100%. And, and um, this is not about throwing away what he has. It's actually just optimizing and actually taking the... the um, the most interesting, incredible information and, and using it to sell. Yeah. I, and I honestly feel, Rob, if you can use video and now with, with iPhones or anything else, you don't have to spend silly money on it. Get some video of your guides, maybe some of the things they'll see on, on the tours. Um, I think that that would really help you as well, differentiate yourself from, from you know, your competition. 
I mean, he could do something, he could say something like helping history and architectural, uh, architecture lovers see London with an expert or fun and informative tours and transport in an iconic black London cab. Like there's things like that, that like that's needs based. And it's like, oh, that's, that's interesting. I want to read on. I want to read more what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And it you know, is the whole, you know, even something along the lines of, you know, yeah who else do you know has toured london in a black cab you know you could have so much fun with this yes you know? yeah you know, why be crammed on the top deck of a bus or you know i mean you gotta be careful but i mean you can have fun i mean this is iconic you know i and that's what's not coming across on the pages for me and clearly rob mm. is getting bookings he is doing business so you know you're doing things right here rob this is just constructive feedback for you i want to see this come off the page that you're offering something very very different right so there we are. Oh, but if you go back one, one yeah. step. Oh, actually, if you stay there, you see on the top right, he's got a click to you. He's got a, a YouTube button. What's on the YouTube? Right here? Yeah. This would click to his, basically his site, his, his see, YouTube channel. Let's see what he's got Is on it? there. All right. Yeah, so he's uh, got some videos. He's got some videos of his drivers. So those could be yeah. incorporated on his website. Uh, absolutely. So he's already got the videos. I would say use these on site. Don't, don't, I mean, great that you've got a YouTube channel for SEO and all of that, but I would definitely want to see some of these on the website. I, um, one, one of the last thing I, I wanted to mention with this page is the information about health and safety. So yeah. I did see that he had it, but it wasn't until I actually went to a tour and booked it that I could see that he had health and safety guidelines. So right. that doesn't, that doesn't help me to decide whether I'm gonna book with him or not because being in a cab is scary for people. If you can dispel the concern in some way before Great. they book, um, that would help a lot. And, and it, was in, it was more of in a paragraph format. And I'll just show you where it is. So we need that more prominent on his website. Yeah. And I can't see where it would have been in the booking. Oof, that's just a wall of text. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 just, it's difficult to follow. So anyway, it was in the, when you get to the bookings. Yeah, right. it's, it's a lot oh, he in the format that it there. is. So he there's some, yes, okay, so there is some videos. There we go. We Good. didn't look at all the, the pages, Rob. We didn't look at all of them. But it wasn't until booking the tour that you got to this section with health and safety. Far too late. Way too late. And it's, it's a big paragraph yeah. that without pictures or anything, that's really going to encourage me to say, okay, they care about what's going on. I'm going to feel safe when I get on this tour. Do you mind scrolling down on that booking page for me? Sure. Just so you can see sure. what else. Yeah, I'm, I know that I'm not, I'm not a fan of the way that he's got what's included in the tour. Um, I think we've got some work to do here, Rob. And, and again, you know, kind of look at, I would look at Jessica's, how she's laying out hers. Um, and I know this is the actual. Delphine as well. And Delphine. Yeah, and, it, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, there's a combination of a copy to kind of excite and, and um, delight, so to speak. And then there's bullet points that can be used and just organized differently. So it's, it's not so daunting when you just get to this page, a wall of text. Yeah. Brilliant. I think we've given lots of feedback there yes. for our three entrepreneurs. And again, I want to thank all three of you. It's never easy to, uh, be, uh, to be evaluated online. It's quite scary. So I'm pleased that you did that. And, and know from Doreen and I that our feedback comes from a place of affection. We want you to be doing more business and booking. So, uh, you know, please take it the way that it's, it's intended, which is to help you. And to our listeners, um, come on to our Facebook page at tourpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. What did Doreen and I miss? Um, tell us what you think can be added or changed in terms of copy. Remember, we're looking at copy rather than SEO as such. It's, it's more the art of copy. Um, you know, come on to the group and, and share your thoughts. And maybe you disagree with Doreen and I, and that's totally cool because, as I really? said, copy copywriting is the dark arts and we all have a different opinion in terms of the way that we shop online. So I I'd love you to come on and uh, continue the feedback. And also, 
if you want to come on a future clinic, uh, drop us a line at shane at tourpreneur.com and uh, Doreen and I can take a look at that site on a future episode of the clinic. And one of the things I would love to look at going forward, Doreen, I don't know how you feel about this, is it's great that we're talking about websites. I would love to look at Torpreneur's Facebook ad copy at some point. Yes. Because that that's a whole other aspect of copy. It's a You're whole now beast. disrupting All someone's beast. day who may not be looking for a London tour or Hawaii tour or t- you know food tours in, in France. You disrupted the day. How do you get them to come onto your own page? I think that would be a fascinating episode as well. A hundred percent. It would it would be. And I, I would also say copy never ends, right? Yeah. Because the more you learn about your guest, the more you learn about your target audience, the more you talk to them, the more you learn the better your copy gets because you incorporated what they say and what their needs are in your copy. Absolutely. And this isn't easy. You know, copywriting, you know, some people get paid a ton of money at at, uh, corporate level to write copy because it's not easy, but it's something that like anything else in life, it just takes practice and time. And that's why I love our three tourpreneurs today. They've reached out for feedback and that's key as well. Don't, don't write this up and, and don't ask for feedback. I think that's the important thing and keep testing. And you know, you, you can't learn this overnight, right, Doreen? I mean, this is something that again, we improve with practice and read other websites, even outside of tours. You know, if what's the last product you bought online from a company you'd never heard of before? You know, what was it about that copy that convinced you to part or to hand over, you know, your cash to buy that product? And we all do it, you know, and ask yourself and go and evaluate that copy. I think that's, that's something we can all do as well. Right. Absolutely. Doreen, where can our listeners and viewers uh, follow you online? You can find me at travellifemedia.com. And I have on the blog, I have lots of marketing tips. I'm going to... Just, just by nature of knowing how, how much this copy has, how, how many people have come to ask various questions about copy, I'm starting to put a lot more tips um, on the blog related to yeah. copy. Also on our face, we have a Facebook page called Tourism Marketing That Works. Yeah. So we, we post marketing tips every week, totally free, all kinds of tour operators, hotels on there, and um, you can pick up a few tips. Well, I really appreciate you doing that, Doreen. You're one of the the experts in our space that's also giving a lot of free content right now. Uh, However, what I would say to tour operators, if you have budget and you don't have time for all this copy stuff, then you can also hire Doreen. And so, you know, do check out her website at travellifemedia.com. Show notes can be found at tourpreneur.com forward slash 117. And if you could uh, hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, that would be fantastic. Thank you for now and uh, thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.